Hello, Anna, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm doing great, how was your weekend? Nice. <laughs> yeah, what did you Very do? Very nice. Very busy, but I have to study my, my because I have a lot of exams this week. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. It, what are you studying, Anna? Psychology. Okay, and what exams do you have this week? Um, um, philosophy, um, estudio la constitución. For constitution, the what constitution? Yes. What? It, what did you say? Something constitution. Ah, constitution is about about um law or about um, similar to lawyer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what other exam? Um, it's complete. It's complicated for me to uh, say that name, but it's a uh, physical physiology. <laughs> physiology. Yes, it's physical physiology. Physical physiology. Physical physiology. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Yes, it's a, it's a psychology about the the um, the function the uh, the function about the I, I don't know it's complicated it's like like a medicine is is the same. Okay, very interesting. Okay, Anna. Well, I'm glad that you are here and that you are ready not only for your exams for university, but for here. Because this week we have exams in English too, right? Uh, I don't know. It's, it's my first class because uh, the, the academy mm -hmm. uh, didn't uh, contact me <laughs> uh, oh. the last week. Um, Today the the um, how do you say today the um, the assistant maybe uh -huh. uh, contact me uh, uh, and ask me for the first a question about the connected but I didn't receive uh, invite and anything. <laughs> But now, yes. Yes. Okay. I think the academy uh, take take uh, take it, uh, the informa word information about me. Okay. But uh, today is my first. It's my my first day in the class. All right, Anna. Well, it's great to meet you. My name is Edwin. I will be helping you in this period. Um, today, we are in the platform. We are already in 2.7. 2.7, today we're going to be learning how to use the present perfect continuous. Last week, we finished with the present perfect. Today is the present perfect continuous. We're going to watch a small video to help us understand a little bit about the grammar structure and the function. Hi, we want you to go back to the previous conversation. Can you find examples of statements with have and haven't been? Now, we want you to stay for the explanation of the structure and use of the present perfect continuous. Present perfect continuous. Use the present perfect continuous for actions that start in the past and continue into the present. What have you been doing lately? I've been working two jobs for the last six months. How long have you been modeling? I've been modeling since I graduated. 
Have you been saving money? No, I haven't been saving any money. I've been spending it. Okay. So, if we look at the examples that they gave us, we can see that the structure is the same. It is have or the subject plus have or has been in the verb ing. What is the meaning? The meaning is that you start in the past and continue today. For example, in Anna, Anna has been studying psychology. She started in the past and continue today. Carla has been working as a lawyer, start in the past and continue to now. This is the difference between present perfect continuous and present perfect. Present perfect, only the experience in the past, but not necessary continue now. As an example, I have gone to Guatemala. I went in the past, we don't know when. It's different if you say I have been. I have been is you continue to do it. It's okay the difference? Okay, let's finish. Yes, teacher. Good. Let's watch some more information. I haven't been saving any money. I've been spending it. Moving on. Present perfect continuous is a tense used for. A continuous or repeated activity that began in the past and continues into the present. It emphasizes the activity itself and its duration. Let's look at these examples. Jack has been waiting for over an hour. I've been studying since three o'clock. How long have you been studying French? And last but not least, we'll go over the structure of these tense. For affirmative, this is what we use. I, we, you, they, plus have been, plus verb, plus ing. He, she, it, plus has been, plus verb, plus ing. When in negative, we need to add the word not between have or has and been. And as always, in questions, the helping verb or the auxiliary goes at the beginning, followed by the subject, like this. Have plus subject plus been plus verb plus ing plus complement. Have you been saving money? Can you now work on the following exercises? How long have you been learning English? Why are you tired? What have you been doing? What have you been eating? Okay, so now we are going to practice a few exercises before we go on to the next knowledge check. In this moment, we have in the chat, we have three different links, okay? Let me give you, hang on a sec. Okay, the, we have three different links. The first two links is to help us with the present perfect continuous. And link number three is to help us with present perfect continuous and the present perfect. So the first two links, super easy. Present perfect continuous, multiple choice present perfect continuous, writing, and then the difference between present perfect and present perfect continuous. For this, we're going to work in partners to complete it. Please open the links before we make the groups. Remember, in the groups, you cannot open the links. Does everybody have the links open? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay, perfect. We have 10 minutes to complete the three links. Honey, I'm pers- Laura, you having some problems?
la hora. Laura, any questions? La hora, good. Let me try to share the screen one more time. Perfect. Hello, this time we want you to listen to the following conversation. The idea is for you to understand what's going on and also to practice it with a friend or a relative. Once you do that, we want you to play the second part of the conversation and get ready to answer the question I have for you. What have you been doing? Part A. Listen and practice. Hey, Gina. I haven't seen you in ages. What have you been doing lately? Nothing exciting. I've been working two jobs for the last six months. How come? I'm saving up money for a trip to Morocco. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, it is. What about you? Well, I've only been spending money. I'm pursuing a full-time modeling career. Really? How long have you been modeling? Since I graduated, but I haven't been getting any work. I need a job soon. I'm almost out of money. What has happened to Pete and Gina since they last saw each other? Please write your answer on our discussion box. Part B. Listen to two other people at the party. What has happened since they last saw each other? Hey, Bob. How's it going? Pretty good, thanks. I haven't seen you for a while. What have you been up to? Well, I've been looking for a house to buy. I finally found one last month. That's terrific. Yeah, I'm really tired of renting. So what have you been doing lately? Well, I just got back from a vacation in Italy. Italy? Where in Italy? Mostly in the north, around Milan. I have a cousin there. I see. Did you have a good time? Yeah, it was great. In fact, I just got engaged to a guy I met there. You're kidding. Well, that must have been some vacation. Okay. So, what can we see? Present perfect are for experiences, things that happened in the past. This is the most important part. That is the examples of present perfect. Now here are the examples of present perfect continuous. Hi, we want you to go back to the previous conversation. Can you find examples of the statements with have and haven't been? Now we want you to stay for the explanation of the structure and use of the present perfect continuous. Present perfect continuous. Use the present perfect continuous for actions that start in the past and continue into the present. What have you been doing lately? I've been working two jobs for the last six months. How long have you been modeling? I've been modeling since I graduated. Have you been saving money? No, I haven't been saving any money. I've been spending it. Moving on, 
Present perfect continuous is a tense used for a continuous or repeated activity that began in the past and continues into the present. It emphasizes the activity itself and its duration. Let's look at these examples. Jack has been waiting for over an hour. I've been studying since three o'clock. How long have you been studying French? And last but not least, we'll go over the structure of these tense. For affirmative, this is what we use. I, we, you, they, plus have been, plus verb, plus ing. He, she, it, plus has been, plus verb, plus ing. When in negative, we need to add the word not between have or has and been. And as always, in questions, the helping verb or the auxiliary goes at the beginning, followed by the subject, like this. Have plus subject plus been plus verb plus ing plus complement. Have you been saving money? Can you now work on the following exercises? How long have you been learning English? Why are you tired? What have you been doing? What have you been eating? Hi, we want you to go back to the previous conversation. Can you find examples of the statements with have and haven't been? Now, we want you to stay for the explanation of the structure and use of the present perfect continuous. Present perfect continuous. Use the present perfect continuous for actions that start in the past and continue into the present. What have you been doing lately? I've been working two jobs for the last six months. How long have you been modeling? I've been modeling since I graduated. Have you been saving money? No, I haven't been saving any money. I've been spending it. Moving on. Present perfect continuous is a tense used for a continuous or repeated activity that began in the past and continues into the present. It emphasizes the activity itself and its duration. Let's look at these examples. Jack has been waiting for over an hour. I've been studying since three o'clock. How long have you been studying French? And last but not least, we'll go over the structure of these tense. For affirmative, this is what we use. I, we, you, they, plus have been, plus verb, plus ing. He, she, it, plus has been, plus verb, plus ing. When in negative, we need to add the word not between have or has and been. And as always, in questions, the helping verb or the auxiliary goes at the beginning, followed by the subject, like this. Have plus subject plus been plus verb plus ing plus complement. Have you been saving money? Can you now work on the following exercises? How long have you been learning English? Why are you tired? What have you been doing? What have you been eating? Okay, guys. Any questions? Um, are you? It's a little bit better to understand the present perfect continuous, or are you a little confused? Uh, I think is is understandable, but uh, we have a mistake in this verb with ing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if 
this is correct like this let me see i have been studying on morning repeat one more time eduardo yeah i don't know if the the spelling the the the, the um, La escritura está bien, está bien escrito. I don't know. Put, put, put into the chat, no problem. Teacher, I have a question too. Yes. Uh, when, uh, for example, if the question says, uh, someone we need to use has or have? Someone has. Has, um, okay. Because mm -hmm. it's, for example, who, right? Because it's, for, it's like it's a who. A we, don't, we don't know. We, we don't know. Yes, which only, is the person, right? Correct. Okay. It's because it's thanks. only one person. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Eduardo, what was the, the spelling? Okay, we'll, we'll continue when you are ready. You put it into the chat and then we can take a look. It's not a problem. All right. So we have the idea of the difference, right? Between the present perfect, present perfect continuous. In this moment on 2.9 in the platform, let's take a look. What is 2.9? Look at number one. Who would like to try to answer number one? What are the correct verbs that we need? I think is working. What have you been doing lately? Okay, what have you oh. been doing? Yes? What? Yeah. What have you yes. been doing? Okay, good. Let's take a look at letter B. What do you think would be the answer in letter B? I have I been have spending. I have been spending. I have been spending. Okay, I have been spending my free time at the beach. Good, letter A. Have you been working? Okay, have you been working? Good, and letter B. Yes, I have. I have been making drinks and coffee time for the past few months. Okay, good. Thank you, Laura. And the next? How, How have, have you have been you? feeling recently? How have you been feeling? Okay, good. And letter B. Great. I had been getting a lot of sleeping. I I not I haven't eaten. I have been I haven't been eating. Sorry. Okay, no problem. Good, good. All right. And the next one. Have you been going and of exercise lady? Okay. Been getting num the first or been getting the second? The first. The first. Okay. Yes. Good. And the last answer? No, I haven't. I have been studying a lot, a lot for a big exam. Okay. Study. Perfect. All right. So great job. As we can see, um, we can double check all of our answers. They are correct. How do we know? Because always at the beginning, we're going to use have. And then we're going to use the auxiliary bin been and the verb in ing remember why because this is the grammar for start in the past and continue to the present okay any questions about any of these exercises no 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 okay 
Perfect. Then that means we have one more exercise to complete unit two. Unit two is reading. Reading is about child prodigies. Today, we're going to be taking a moment and read a little bit about child prodigies. Do you know what is the word prodigies? What is the meaning prodigies? Prodigies. Okay, great. So we have a couple ideas for child prodigies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do you know any child prodigy? No, I think no. No? Okay. In El Salvador, we have a program for child prodigies in the National University. It is for those children that are very good in mathematics and they have special classes to help them. Today, we're going to read a little bit similar about the child prodigies. We have three different children in different areas. Who would like to read the first paragraph? It's a big paragraph. Who would like to read the first one? Me. Teacher. Perfect. Okay, great. And the second paragraph? Me. Good. Thank you, Christian. And the last one? Me. Okay. Thank you, Laura. Okay. Please read the first paragraph, Child Prodigies. Okay. Other musicians have described Sarah Chang as the most wonderful, perfect violinist they've ever heard. What makes this praise especially surprising is Sarah's age. She's only in her 20s. And people have been describing her this way since she was a child. On Sarah's fourth birthday, her father gave her a violin by age five. She was accepted at the famous Juilliard School of Music in New York City. By eight, she was performing as a violin soloist with major orchestras. Since, since then, Sarah has performed around the world and recorded many albums. Thank you. Any words you don't know? A, a prize, I, I don't know what is the pronunciation, but for wins, yes. What so makes prize. it prize, I oh, don't know. Prize. Praise, what makes this praise? Exactly, that, that word. Good, Laura. Pronunciation is praise. 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 Yes, okay. it's synonym of compliment. Mm -hmm. Like, Laura, your hair is beautiful. And you receive the praise from some, uh, this is the idea of the compliment. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, sorry, I'm not. Cashing. Can you use another example? Of please? course. Um, when your boss, when your boss tells you, hey, you did a, a great job. That was wonderful. This is a praise. This is a compliment. Okay. okay. Got it. Good. Okay. Okay. This is my turn, right? Yes, please. Okay. Before Michael Kearney was born, the doctors were it his parents that he may have learning difficulties. He proving them wrong ever since. By the time he, he, he was four months old, Michael called said for a sentence like, what, what's for dinner, mom? By 10 months, he couldn't read words, studying at home with his parents. Michael completed four grade levels each year. At 10, he graduated from college with honors. And at 14, he received a master's degree. Now in, the, now in his late teens, 
he's teaching uh working on his PA, phd okay great any words maybe an expression meaning that is uh, ever since that means from that moment to now this is ever since okay mm -hmm. thank you you're welcome any other words no teacher all right great and let's take a look at the last paragraph okay when alexandra nechita was two her parents gave her some crayons and coloring books alexandra was soon working in inks watercolor and by the time she was seven oil paints at eight alexandra had her first art exhibit. I don't know how to say it. Mm -hmm. And now a young adult, now a young adult, Ale Alexandra is one of the most recognized artists in the world. Her paintings are often compared to those of Picasso and other great artists. They have sold for as much as $80,000. She has been on TV many times and several books of her painting have been published. Okay, very good. Any questions for the last part? What is the meaning of inks? Of? Inks. Inks. Uh, for example, in the pen, in big is inks. Inks. So the, the inks is with the pen, like with big. Ah, mm -hmm. okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Any other words? Words? No. Teacher. Yes? Oil painting, paint? Oil paintings is the type of material they use for paint. These are oh, okay. oil. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions or words? The pronunciation and the in the word exhibit or exhibit, uh, how we can say it? Exhibit. Alexandra, exhibit. Yes, Alexandra had her first art exhibit. Okay, and rec recognized. That's the right pronunciation, right? That is the correct pronunciation. Ah, okay, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay, great. So in that case, we have a couple of questions. Only five questions. Let's answer them together. So that way we can continue. Number one, how do other musicians describe Sarah? What did they say? The most wonderful, perfect violinist. Okay. The most wonderful, perfect violinist. Who gave Sarah her first violin? Her father. Her father. Her father. Okay. Where did Sarah go to school? Juilliard School of Music. Okay. What did doc what did doctors tell Michael's parents? He might have learning. He might have learning difficult. Good. And the last one, whose work has Alexandra's been compared to? Picasso's. Picasso. Yes. Okay. Great job. As we can see, all of those answers are correct. So this means that in this moment today, we are already finished unit two. Any questions about unit two before we continue with unit three? Any questions? Yes?
Okay. So, yeah. So this means that we have already finished and we are ready to begin unit three. Before we begin unit three, we have a few questions that we're going to practice with our partners, okay? These are the questions to help us a little bit about today. The idea for the questions is for you to have the opportunity to answer in complete sentences. As an example, in the chat, you have a list of questions, okay? Please open up the, uh, the chat and take a look at the questions that you have there. Okay, did you open the link for the different questions? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, it's sure. Please ask me a question from the list. Yes. Go Have ahead. you ever shot a gun? All time question? Have you ever shot a gun? Yes, I have. This answer is correct, but it's not a good answer, okay? Yes, I have shot a gun. This answer is better, but it's not a good answer. Yes, I have. I shot a gun. I've shot many different types of guns. I have shot a Glock 40 uh, about a year ago, and I've also shot a couple of different rifles in Ings. I first started to learn how to shoot with my friend. He was 18 years old, and he took... This is the correct answer. Do we see the difference? More detail with one. Exactly. We want a detail and we don't want only question and answer. When I finish telling my story, I ask my partner. After I finish my story, hey, Christian, what about you? Have you ever shot a gun? No, I have not had the opportunity to shoot a gun but I would like to, sh to have the opportunity. Good, very good. A little mistake with the grammar, but very good, Christian. I haven't yeah. had the opportunity to shoot a gun. Shoot, okay. Excellent, and that's it. Oh, you see, this is the idea. If the answer is yes, a lot of details. The answer is no, the explanation. But both answers, long answers. Not only yes, no, and that's it. It's okay? Okay. 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 So before we start with our groups, any questions? No. No question, Dish. Okay. No. Right. Wonderful. So then we have five minutes. With five minutes, we're going to talk with our partners and try to answer all of them. Okay. So let's Okay. 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 Sorry, we have 10 minutes, 10 minutes, and we want to try to answer different questions. It's not necessary to go in order, but it is necessary to give the details. Nancy, you okay? Laura, you okay? Laura, Nancy, if you can't connect, it's okay. Let me know. I'll try to put you into another group.
Laura Janssen. Laura, were you able to connect? No. Uh, I'm sorry? Were you, you weren't able to connect, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, okay. I wasn't able. <laughs> okay, let me try it one more time. Let's see if I can send you to another group. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. Nice to have you back with us. So can you tell me which movies are playing in theaters right now? Can you tell me which movies have you seen? The next conversation is about two people trying to decide which movie to see tonight. Try to listen carefully for details. What's playing? Part A. Listen and practice. Do you want to see a movie tonight? Hmm, maybe. What's playing? How about the new James Bond film? I hear it's really exciting. Actually, the last one was boring. What about the movie based on Stephen King's new novel? I don't know. His books are usually fascinating, but I don't like horror movies. Well, what do you want to see? I'm interested in the new Halle Berry movie. It looks good. That's fine with me. She's a wonderful actress. Now that you have listened to the conversation, tell me what happens next. What do they decide to do? Write it on our discussion box. Yeah, her last movie was especially good. It's probably one of my favorites of all time. Actually, I didn't see that, but I heard it was just okay. Well, I'll call the theater and find out what time the movie starts. Hello? Could you tell me what time the new Halle Berry movie is playing tonight? I'm sorry. The Halle Berry movie closed last night. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Thanks. You won't believe this. It's not showing anymore. It just finished playing last night. Oh, no. I guess we're back where we started. Why don't we just see what's on TV tonight? That's fine with me. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that this is part of our using participles as adjectives. What are we going to have? Different participles. One more time, let's listen and take a look at the different Nice parts. to have you back with us. So, can you tell me which movies are playing in theaters right now? Can you tell me which movies have you seen? The next conversation is about two people trying to decide which movie to see tonight. Try to listen carefully for details. What's playing? Part A. Okay, so as I want you to see, and here we have different participles. The participles are the verbs with ing. Okay, that's the idea. All of these words like fascinating or exciting or different, these are the different adjectives. All of the adjectives have ing. Now, we also have other adjectives that have ed. Okay, so how what is going to be the difference well the difference is mainly what we look at when we're talking about things they're going to be ing when we're talking about ourselves or people they're going to be ed this is what we refer to as participles so here when we say participles as adjectives we are talking about those that have adjectives that are ed ing okay here we're going to see the difference between present participles and past participles, which is what I just explained. ED or ING. Welcome. This time you will learn about participles used as adjectives in present and in past. Please take notes and feel free to play the audio program as well as the explanation as many times as you need to. Page 87. Exercise 3. Grammar focus. Participles as adjectives. Present participles. Stephen King's books are fascinating. The last James Bond film was boring. 
The new Halle Berry movie sounds interesting. Past participles. I'm fascinated by Stephen King's books. I was bored by the last James Bond film. I'm interested in the new Halle Berry movie. Before we begin, I want to go over to what exactly is the past participle. The past participle is the form of a verb typically ending in ed in English that is used in forming perfect and passive tenses and sometimes as an adjective. In this section, we'll study participles as adjectives. Pay attention. I want to go over two important points. Number one, do you remember what an adjective is? Very good. An adjective describes a noun. For example, the white cat ran away from John. Adjective, white, noun, cat. In other words, because participles can be used as adjectives, it means that the participle as adjective also describes a noun. For example, the white cat was exciting to watch. Noun, cat, participle as adjective, exciting. Number two. I imagine you noticed we use present and past participles during the audio program. Let's work around that. When we use present participle, we add ing. And when we use past participle, we add ed. Notice what happens here. We took the verb excite and we turn it into present participle, becoming exciting. The same verb, but this time into past participle, and it became excited. I know you're wondering when to use participles in present or past. Here you go. Present participles describe a noun, and past participles describe feeling of a noun. I'll try to simplify it. ing equals outside factor that causes a feeling. ED equals expresses the feeling or reaction. With examples, I am sure you will understand it better. Here, I am just showing you the present and past participle. Interesting, interested. Tiring, tired. Exciting, excited. Now we'll use them in sentences. The museum is interesting. I'm interested. Work is tiring. I am tired. The movie is exciting. I'm excited. Okay, welcome back. I hope the questions were fun and entertaining. Did you have any questions about vocabulary or words that you wanted to use that you didn't know how to pronounce or how what the words were? No, everything is okay? No, Tisha. I think so. All right, excellent. Anna Aguillon, can you please read what are we going to learn in the next in the next objective? Okay. In this class, participants will listen to a conversation where pass when parties participants as an adjective are used in context. Okay. To help us understand a little bit, we're going to watch a small video about a conversation where they're using participles as adjectives. And then I'll explain a little bit to make it easier for us to understand. Part A, listen and practice. Nice to have you back with us. So can you tell me which movies are playing in theaters right now? Can you tell me which movies have you seen? The next conversation is about two people trying to decide which movie to see tonight. 
Try to listen carefully for details. What's playing? Part A. Listen and practice. Do you want to see a movie tonight? Hmm, maybe. What's playing? How about the new James Bond film? I hear it's really exciting. Actually, the last one was boring. What about the movie based on Stephen King's new novel? I don't know. His books are usually fascinating, but I don't like horror movies. Well, what do you want to see? I'm interested in the new Halle Berry movie. It looks good. That's fine with me. She's a wonderful actress. Okay. So, here we can find many participles. What are participles? Participles are verbs that have in the present, ing, or in the past, ed. So, here we can see we have a lot of them. For example, fascinating, boring, interested. Uh, all of these different types of words are what we're looking at. These are participles. What are they? They're verbs with ing or with ed. Does anybody know when to use ing or when to use ed? I think um, with ing is when we are expressing uh, activities or something and we use ed when a feeling, right? Okay, very nice. Yes, that is the idea. Good. Today, we're going to learn a little bit more. That way, tomorrow, we can practice using them. Now that you have listened to the conversation, tell me what happens next. What do they decide to do? Write it on our discussion box. Yeah, her last movie was especially good. It's probably one of my favorites of all time. Actually, I didn't see that, but I heard it was just okay. Well, I'll call the theater and find out what time the movie starts. Hello? Could you tell me what time the new Halle Berry movie is playing tonight? I'm sorry. The Halle Berry movie closed last night. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Thanks. You won't believe this. It's not showing anymore. It just finished playing last night. Oh, no. I guess we're back where we started. Why don't we just see what's on TV tonight? So what happened next in the conversation? What did they decide to do? Do you want to listen one more time? They, they say they say watching TV, right? Correct. They stay home watching TV. Why? Why didn't they go to the movies? Uh, because the last the presentation Haley was movie. last night. Exactly. The last presentation finished. It was last night. Excellent. And that's what they decided to do. Stay home watching movies. Now we're going to learn a little bit more about this present participle and the past participle. We're going to make sure that everybody understands the difference between both of them. Please pay attention because the video is a little bit long and it has a lot of information. If you have a question, tell me and I will pause the video and explain and make sure that you understand. Okay, remember the video is a little bit long, so please let me know if you have any questions during. It's about I'll try it one more time. Let's see. Please complete. Welcome. This time you will learn about participles used as adjectives in present and in past. Please take notes and feel free to play the audio program as well as the explanation as many times as you need to. Page 87. Exercise 3. Grammar focus. Participles as adjectives. Present participles. Stephen King's books are fascinating. The last James Bond film was boring. 
The new Halle Berry movie sounds interesting. Past participles. I'm fascinated by Stephen King's books. I was bored by the last James Bond film. I'm interested in the new Halle Berry movie. Before we begin, I want to go over to what exactly is the past participle. The past participle is the form of a verb typically ending in ed in English that is used in forming perfect and passive tenses and sometimes as an adjective. In this section, we'll study participles as adjectives. Pay attention. I want to go over two important points. Number one, do you remember what an adjective is? Very good. An adjective describes a noun. For example, the white cat ran away from John. Adjective, white, noun, cat. In other words, because participles can be used as adjectives, it means that the participle as adjective also describes a noun. For example, the white cat was exciting to watch. Noun, cat, participle as adjective, exciting. Number two, I imagine you noticed we use present and past participles during the audio program. Let's work around that. When we use present participle, we add ing. And when we use past participle, we add ed. Notice what happens here. We took the verb excite and we turn it into present participle, becoming exciting. The same verb, but this time into past participle and it became excited. I know you're wondering when to use participles in present or past. Here you go. Present participles describe a noun and past participles describe feeling of a noun. I'll try to simplify it. ing equals outside factor that causes a feeling. ed equals expresses the feeling or reaction. With examples, I am sure you will understand it better. Here, I am just showing you the present and past participle. Interesting, interested. Tiring, tired, exciting, excited. Now we'll use them in sentences. The museum is interesting. I'm interested. Work is tiring. I am tired. The movie is exciting. I'm excited. Please complete the description below with the correct form of these words. As always, write your answers in our discussion box. Okay, so before we complete the exercise, let's take a look to make sure that it's clear. When do we use ing? When can we use the ing? When, when the is the is happening in the moment. Mm, but this is a verb, but here we didn't learn about an action. There is no action with present participles. Mm -hmm. So when do we I use? Mm -hmm. I think express or reason. Okay, good. Today we learn that the present participle, the verb with ing, is not for an action. It is to describe something. For example, Fast and Furious. Oh, the movie is exciting. I described the movie. Me, I was excited when I watched the movie. Oh, the movie was entertaining. Me, I was entertained. This is the difference when we use the verb as, a, as an adjective. We are going to use ing, but to describe the thing. We're going to use ed to describe the feeling, okay? Now we're going to try to complete the exercise together. 
to make sure that we understand. Here we have the exercise. Let's take a look. I want you to try, and then we're going to complete. Let's see. I had a terrible time at the movies. First, my ticket cost $10. I was really... Which word and which form would be the correct way? Disgusted. 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 Okay. Maybe, but not disgusted. Try a different word. Hmm. Maybe it's disgusted, but it's good with the ED. Let's see. And maybe later we find a better word. I was really disgusted by the price. By mistake, I gave the cashier a $5 bill instead of a 10. I was a little... Embarrassed. Good. With ED. Good. I was a little embarrassed. Then there was trash all over the theater. The mess was... Disgust. Mm, maybe it's better here, right? But it's not discussed. What do we use? ING or ED? ING. ING because it's not, a, it's not a feeling. It's a noun. So the mess was disgusting. The people behind me talked during the movie, which was? Annoying. Annoying. Good. The story was hard to follow. I always find thrillers too. Confusing. Confusing. Because it's here it says hard to follow. It's, this means difficult to understand. The story was difficult to understand. I always find thrillers too. Confusing. I like the special effects though. They were amazing. Amazing. So if we use disgusting with the mess, what word do we use at the beginning? I was shocked. really shocked. Good. Only the pronunciation shocked. Shocked. Correct. What is shocked? Surprised. Imagine you go to uh, La Gran Via and then the ticket costs $10. How would you feel? <gasps> Surprised or this is the word shocked. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Any words you didn't understand? No? No. Okay, no. great. What does this mean? Well, in this case, this means that we finished today on 3.3 and that tomorrow we are going to begin in the platform with 3.4. Tomorrow we're going to practice using adjectives, okay? Verbs with ing or ed, but as adjectives. So, Tomorrow, we're going to use present and past participle to describe different things. Okay? Oh, Please okay. complete unit one and two, and I see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for connecting. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you.